Hello, everyone. I'm Mr. Lascala, the art teacher. Thanks for joining us on this asynchronous learning day. We're going to be learning exactly what everyone else has been learning. I'm going to go through the entire lesson. I'm going to anticipate answers, and I'm going to show you um, different lines, shapes, and colors. I'm going to be reading two books today, one about pumpkin picking and apple picking, and the other book is going to be about Monsters and colors. I'll tell you why monsters in a little bit. The first thing you will need to do is get some supplies ready. You'll need crayons, assorted is fine, and you'll need paper. Okay, I like white copy paper. Pencil would be fine also. That's for signing your name when you are finished. And so you can send it in to me. Now, if you have notebook paper, we can use that. If you don't have crayons and you want to use colored pencils, that's okay. We can use colored pencils. Um, if you have color sticks, you could use those. Those are fine. If you're using a marker, that's okay if there's an adult with you. All right, Make sure there's an adult watching you. Put the cap, the cap on the back so you don't lose the cap. And make sure you're under uh, direct supervision when you're using a marker, if you're using a marker. I'm also going to go over uh, glue safety. Uh, and uh, scissor safety. All right. Let's start by going on an adventure with Clifford, the big red dog. This is called Picking Apples and Pumpkins. I like to read this this time of year, every year. Clifford, the big red dog, picking apples and pumpkins. Emily Elizabeth raised her hand... <clears throat> Excuse me. Today is our field trip day, said Miss Carrington. We will visit Farmer Brown's apple farm. I love field trips, said Charlie. Clifford would love to visit a farm, said Emily Elizabeth. Emily Elizabeth raised her hand. Miss Carrington, she asked, can Clifford come too? I don't see why not, replied Miss Carrington. Woof, barked Clifford. Hooray, said Emily Elizabeth. Let's go, shouted the class. Welcome to my farm, said Farmer Brown. Shall we start with a hay ride? Yes, shouted the class. They ran to the hay wagon. I love hay rides, said Jetta. I've never been on one before, said Charlie. It's lots of fun, said Emily Elizabeth. Farmer Brown turned the key to start the tractor's engine. <laughs> Nothing happened. Farmer Brown turned the key again. <laughs> the tractor still would not start. Oh, I'm sorry, kids, said Farmer Brown. My tractor is broken. It can't pull the wagon. Emily Elizabeth had an idea. Clifford can pull the hay wagon, she said. Woof, barked Clifford. Farmer Brown hooked Clifford up to the hay wagon. It was not too heavy for the big red dog. Clifford pulled the wagon all around the farm. Jetta waved to the cows. You can wave, and you can make a cow noise. Moo, or moo. Baz waved to the pigs. Right down there. You can make a pig noise. Boink, or <coughs> Emily Elizabeth waved to the ducks. There are the ducks. You can go quack, quack, or quack, 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 quack. This is fun, said Charlie. Well, believe it or not, I think the most fun is Farmer Brown there. <laughs> He's having the most fun. Clifford stopped beside some apple trees. May we pick apples? Asked Emily Elizabeth. Yes, you may. Yes, you may, replied Farmer Brown. Emily Elizabeth and Jetta climbed onto Clifford's back. They picked apples. Yum, said Jetta. 
Clifford pulled the wagon back to the barn. The kids climbed out. Thank you, Clifford, said Farmer Brown. You saved the hayride. Now it's time for arts and crafts, said Miss Carrington. We're going to make hand turkeys. We're going to make hand tur turkeys next month, I hope. Everyone ran to the picnic table. On the, on the table were cups of apple cider. The kids traced the outline of their hands on paper. Miss Carrington helped cut out the outlines. Then the kids decorated them to look like turkeys. You can make a turkey noise. You can go gobble, gobble, or you can go. <laughs> Clifford, would you like to make a paw turkey? Asked Emily Elizabeth. Oof, barked Clifford. Emily Elizabeth traced his paw on a big piece of paper. She cut it out and colored it red. Perfect, she said. I would say, perfect. Then it was time to leave. Thank you for a great day, Miss Carrington said to Farmer Brown. Thank you, Farmer Brown, said the class. You're welcome, replied Farmer Brown. Clifford, you can come work in my orchard any time. Charlie said, oh, on the bus, Miss Carrington asked, class, what were you thankful for? Charlie said, I'm thankful for the hayride. Jetta said, I'm thankful for the yummy apples. I'm thankful for Clifford, said Emily Elizabeth. Woof, barked Clifford. The end. Go ahead and clap. Okay, we are going to ask, I'm going to ask a few questions about the book, and you can answer. You can answer by holding up one finger, two fingers, or three fingers, just like this. I used to hold my three fingers like this. It doesn't matter. You could even, if you want to get fancy, go like that for three fingers. All right. So you could also shout it out if you'd like. I would not suggest shouting, but you could say out loud uh, which number you think the answer is. Right. First question. Who wanted Clifford to come along on the field trip? Was it Jetta, Emily Elizabeth, or Charlie? That's right. It was Emily Elizabeth. Two fingers. You can go like that for two fingers or peace, man. How did Clifford help Farmer Brown? He ate all the apples. He took a nap. He pulled the hay wagon. That's right. Three, he pulled the hay wagon. And last, my favorite question. What color is Clifford? Blue, yellow, Red. That's right. Three fingers. If you had three fingers for red, you got the right answer. You can give yourself a pat on the back. Good job. All right. We're going to put that down. We're going to get our materials and we're going to get started. We are going to make pumpkins. We're going to be using the lines that we've learned from uh, previous lessons and uh, some shapes, and we're going to be using a new shape today. Our new shape is if you know what it is, go ahead and shout it out. Uh-huh, close. Yes. Some of you said diamond, and that is, that is fine. We like to call it a rhombus. Say rhombus. It has four sides. One, two, 
three, four. And it does look like a diamond. Although there's a five-sided diamond over here. That's what I think a diamond looks like. That's a profile of a five-sided diamond. And five-sided shapes are usually called pentagons of some kind. All right, so you should have a piece of paper. It could be notebook paper. You should have your black crayon to start off with and your crayons ready. You should have your paper off to the side on the table or on the desk so that you can see me boop, boop, while you're coloring. All right. You are going to start by putting your paper in front of you so that it's this direction. Do you know what that is? That's right. Sometimes we can call it landscape. Sometimes teachers call it landscape where it's long ways like that. I like to say horizontal. Your turn. Horizontal. Very cool. So we're going to start by drawing an oval in the middle of this paper, right about there. You could trace with your finger what an oval might look like. It's a vertical oval on horizontal white paper. And this is what it'll look like when you're doing it. You hold your crayon towards the tip. You draw an oval. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's not perfect. No pumpkin is perfect. Give it a try. It could look like an amoeba. Just try not to make it look like a star. <laughs> All right. Next step, we're going to put a dot on the top and a reference dot on the bottom. Like so. All right. Now you're going to draw a letter C from the top going all the way to the bottom one. It's going to make a shape that kind of looks like a banana. I guess it could look like a smile. Back to this way. So we're going to draw another one going around like that. Because we can't erase crayon, so I like you to trace it before you do it. And that's what it'll look like. A crescent moon. So we have one, two, three shapes. We're going to make it on the other side now. It's going to be a backwards letter C. And then another backwards letter C that's even bigger. Very nice. Now's our first opportunity to draw a stem that looks like the rhombus. Okay, here's how I make the rhombus. Make a triangle roof, and then like an ice cream cone bottom. You can make a rectangle, you can make an oval, you can even make a little vine sticking out, a curly vine. It's up to you. It's your creation. You're supposed to have fun with it. Don't get upset if it doesn't come out perfect. Nothing is perfect. Teachers and parents and adults, they just want you to try to do your best. The worst thing that you can do is give up. So if you make a mistake, try not to cross it out. Turn it into a masterpiece. There's a lot of ways to do that. The best way to do that is to keep moving on. And that's what we're going to keep doing. So we're going to go over to this side. We're going to work from left to right, okay, because that's how we read. So we're going to start on this area. I'm going to call this crescent moon a number one. That's the first one we're going to do. We're going to still use our black crayon. Mine's losing its point. That's okay. We're going to do these kind of lines. We practiced these last week when we were making seaweed with our rainbow fish. Okay, shout it out when you know what that is. Wavy lines, very good. I have three or four different kinds of wavy lines. You can make your own, you can make big, you can make small. They don't have to be perfect. Try to stay in that banana shape. And there's my wavy lines. Now we can take our black crayon and put it away. We're going to get the color of a pumpkin next. 
What color? That's right. Orange. We're going to put that in this two area. We're going to make another rhombus. Okay. Our roof and our cone. Or you can go our cone and then a roof. Or you can just kind of make that shape and then that shape. All right. You can make them big, medium, or small. My favorites are the really tiny ones. Try to stay in those lines as best you can. And it's okay if you don't go and have a complete one. It gives it some aesthetic. All right. Now, I went pumpkin picking last week, and this is the color I got on one side of my pumpkin. Green! So pumpkins can be green sometimes. I think I might make like a Frankenstein monster on that side. Maybe I'll make it two-sided. We'll see. That's a line. We have a horizontal line. It kind of looks like a stripe. You're just going to draw lines. They can be different uh, heights away from each other. They can be really close. They can be really far. You just need to know that they're horizontal. Say horizontal. Oops. Even teachers make mistakes. That's okay. What color is this? Brown. For brown, we're going to put in this area here, and we're going to make it like we made our rainbow fish scales, except it's going to be the ones that start like this letter. What letter is that? Very good. We're going to put a few next to it on both sides, and it looks like the shape we made, it looks like scales. It's a scallop design. We can make them long, we can make them tiny. Make them big. It kind of looks like waves. I think it kind of looks like roof tiles. Kind of like shingles. Shingles are like a, a roof tile. There you go. Maybe one or two more up there. I get to put the brown crayon away. And our last color that we're going to be using is this one. Shout it out when you see it. Purple. Very nice. This is actually blue violet. And what we're going to do is make zigzags. Zigzags are kind of like mountains. Okay. I like to think purple majesty. Okay, you can do tiny ones, tall ones, ones that aren't very close, ones that are really close. All right, have fun with it. Just try to stay in this banana shape, this uh, shape right here. All right, now that we have the purple crayon, I'm going to show you how to color it lightly in. You're going to color all of these colors correspondingly. So for the purple, I'm going to do the purple area here, but I'm going to color it lightly. To color it lightly, I use the back of the crayon. I hold it about halfway up on the crayon like I would a, a pencil, but further from the tip. And then I color inside that curve. So that looks like that. And that's how it should look. For each of the colors, you can do a different um, shade. It looks like there's two different colors, even though it's just the same crayon. You're going to use brown for here, green, orange, and your black crayon. Remember, when you do the black crayon lightly, like we did last time, it'll come out like a gray. Right? Don't forget you can color your stem in. That could be any color you want. Usually they would be uh, green, brown, or even tan. But it really doesn't matter. 
Then when you're done with that, you could even color all around here any colors you'd like. You can even give yourself a horizon line if you want. While you're coloring that, I'm going to talk about glue and scissor safety. Okay. There's a lot of different ways to, to use the glue. Uh, sometimes teachers will have it in a bowl or a plate. Um, sometimes you use a popsicle stick or a tongue depressor to apply glue. Sometimes you just dip it in and there's like a sponge of glue and you can dip it on that. But what I like is using the actual glue bottles. Right? Some are different, but they always have a cap on them. Not all like this. But if you have one like this, you just twist it until the top pops up. And you put it onto your project. You always put it on the smaller piece that you're going to put onto the bigger piece. Okay. So if the teacher says four dots, you're going to put four dots of glue on the smaller piece. Whoop, 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 whoop. Let me see if I can do the drop noise. And then you're going to take it and you're gonna put it onto your bigger piece of paper and hold it there for at least 10 seconds. You can count with me if you're still coloring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. When you're finished, you just twist it down so you can store it. You may get some glue on your fingers. You can just rub your fingers together if you have white glue on your fingers. If you get it on your palms, just rub your hands together till it gets nice and warm. You can even peel off the extra stuff that's on there. You can rub wherever it's extra till it crumbles off to the ground. Then you may use, uh, you can wash your hands if you'd like, warm water and soap, or you can use your sanitizer. If you have time, you can sanitize with me. I put a little bit in my palm and I sing the ABC song quite quickly, actually. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sanitize with me? All right. So that's how I like to sanitize. Uh, next, while you're coloring still, you do not need scissors today. We eventually, though, we're in kindergarten, we need to know how to use the scissors. We don't hold them like this. No, no, no. We hold them like this. Yes, yes, yes. We cut away from ourselves. We don't turn towards ourselves when we're cutting. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. This is me turning the paper. Here, I'll show you an example. Okay, when we turn the paper, we're cutting a lot better than if we were turning our wrists, okay? We're not pointing at anyone we shouldn't be. Remember, this is our tool, not a toy. And that's how we can cut a curve. Mine kind of looks like a smile. Maybe a, a mustache for the hundredth day. <laughs> Something like that. Want to hear my, my older person voice? You young kids better get off my grass. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So we know scissors are uh, not for near our face, our family, or our friends. We know they're a tool, and we know how to walk with them, right? Went over it last week and the week before. Okay. There there we are. So you hold the scissors like this at your side. Okay. Kind of away from you. Like that. All right. The real best way to hold scissors is to not. Okay. Uh, the real good way to hold them or transport them is to keep them in your box, keep them in your pencil bin, keep them with your crayons, your art supplies, your arts and crafts box. Keep it with your glue. Keep it in a container so this way when you sit down, you could just open the box instead of having to worry about carrying stuff around like this. All right? Very good. At this point, you should be finished coloring. I'm going to read the next book. So at this time, you can relax, chill out, and uh, let the story take you on an adventure. I'm going to suggest now you get a sip of water. 
Um, remember, if you have to use the bathroom or something like that, to tell the adult that's in the same room that you need to use the bathroom, all right? They might have to watch this because it's asynchronous learning, which means I'm just gonna keep going. Monsters Love Colors. Written and illustrated by Mike Austin. I like that when an illustrator is the author. As an art teacher, my favorite are the, um, yeah, the illustrators. Monsters love to scribble, scribble, mix, dance, and wiggle. You could wiggle if you want. Mix, mash, and splash. Squish, mish, and squash. Squish, squash, mish, mosh. Mash, mish, squish, squash. There's a whole pile of adjectives down there. Now, when we get to using paint, we do not squish, squash, mish, mosh, all right? We actually will be mixing paint to get different colors. And we are hopefully so good at it that we don't even need smocks, okay? But if you are going to use paint, uh, make sure an adult is there, obviously, first thing. And then um, I would suggest using a smock, an old shirt, turn inside out, or you could even wear backwards. Something like this would be fine to flip inside and put your hands in. Or, um, or you could be very careful. Um, if you do make a, a spill or a mess, even if it's not paint, you should tell an adult immediately, all right? You will have to clean it up, but it's easier to clean up if it's still wet, all right? Just a little helpful tint, hint. And if you do get some something on something that you're not supposed to, um, don't get upset, parents. Um, magic eraser, it really is magic. It, it's taken uh, crayon off my walls many a time. It's, uh, it's really amazing. It takes off marker, and uh, even the generic brand is, is amazing. I don't know what it is, but it takes, it takes stains out. If you get stuff on the clothes, um, you can um, get something I, I call, uh, something is called Kiss Off. It's really good for getting stains off. That's a little note to parents and uh, educators and uh, grandparents and friends. Monsters love new colors. What color is this? Yellow. What color is this? Red. What color is this guy with muscles? Very good. Blue. These are my favorite this month. Okay, these three colors. These three colors represent the primary colors. Say, primary colors. With these three primary colors, you can make secondary colors. We're going to learn about secondary colors in just a few, oh, in just next page or two. My favorite color is red. Red is the color of roar and snore and more, more, more. My favorite color is yellow. Yellow is the color of prowl and howl and growl, growl, growl. My favorite color is blue. Blue is the color of scribble and dribble and nibble, nibble, nibble. Hey, don't eat your crayon, silly monster. That's right. Art supplies don't go anywhere near your mouth. What new favorite color can we make for you? Orange, says this guy. The little one says, orange. Scribble, scribble, mix, dance, and wiggle. Mixing red and yellow makes orange burr, 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 burr. what new color can we make for you green green 
Dribble, scribble, mix, dance, and wiggle. Mixing yellow and blue makes green. Me next. And what new favorite color can we make for you? Purple. Hey, buddy, I was supposed to say purple. Scribble, scribble, mix, dance, and wiggle. Mixing red and blue makes purple. And what new favorite color can we make for you? Red, yellow, blue, orange, green, purple. Hmm. I know. Super Tropical Mega Monster Rainbow Swirl with Raspberry on top. Scribble, scribble, drip, splash, dribble, mix, mash, squish, squash, dance, and wiggle. Rainbow. Monsters do love colors. New colors, old colors, all colors. Let's go through the colors that we see. Red. Yellow. Blue. Orange. Green. Purple. And that's right. Rainbow. The end. That's written in script right there. It says the end. That's cursive. You don't need to know how to how to how to write in cursive, but you know what your generation can do? You guys can type with just two fingers faster than anyone can write in script. Well, faster than most people can write in script. You'll you'll learn how to type with your thumb soon enough. All right, we are going to now do finger exercises, all right? We're gonna limber up our fingers so you can go like this first. All right, you can like pretend you're playing the piano from a distance and go like this, like you are um, a puppet master, a marionette master. Marionette's a puppet with strings, kind of like how Pinocchio was. Yeah. Next, you could put your thumbs up and roll them around and go the other way. You can roll your wrists forwards and then backwards and then forwards and then backwards. You can scrunch your hands. Okay, touch your thumbs to your index finger, your pointer finger. Then your middle finger, the tall one. Then you're going to do it to the ring finger. And then the little one. Okay, now we get to shake it all out. Don't forget to shake your head. Very good. Nice job. We have a little bit more time. So I'm going to show you um, how to snap your fingers. So when you're happy or in a poetry reading, you clap by snapping your fingers. Now, if you don't know how to snap your fingers, that's okay. I didn't learn until I was older. But you can go like this. Very good. Or you can actually practice. All right. So to snap your fingers, the long middle finger touches the thumb like this, all right? It's not going to work with your pointer. No, no, no. It's not going to work with your ring finger or the pinky. Best way to start is the tall finger and the thumb. You're going to squish them together. Squish them so hard that when your thumb slips close to you, it pops up and your finger, your tall finger, snaps down. Okay? The thumb kind of stays there, and that's how you snap. Eventually, you'll be able to do it with both fingers. If you practice, You'll be able to do it with more than one finger. 
And then practice more, more than one finger on each hand. All right, sounds like, uh, what is that? Castanets, I think is what they're called. All right. Now that your finger's all ready to go, we are now ready to draw a rhombus monster. Remember our rhombus has four sides. We're going to get our crayon ready. Crayons are ready. They are in here. We're gonna get our pumpkin and flip it over. And use the back of it. If you wanna use a new paper, you can do that. If you're using a notebook, just flip to the next page. If you want to use the back of your notebook or any paper, that's fine. I like to reuse the paper as much as possible so you can use the back. We're going to hold our paper this direction. Remember what that's called? It's like a building or a book. Say vertical. <laughs> All right. We're going to get our trusty black crayon for outlining. So this way you can see it. The only problem, like I said before, is that you can't erase with a uh, crayon, right? And if you don't have a crayon, that's okay. You can use a colored pencil, or this is probably even best if you use a regular pencil that has an eraser, right? I don't want you to get upset if you make mistakes. It's art class. You just roll with it. To start, make a dot right about here on your paper. Let me put one here and here on the sides. I'm going to go down there and down here. And then you're going to make your last one there. All right? It kind of looks like a square already. You can see a kite formation almost. Now you're going to connect the two. And then the top down, this way you have your roof. Now you can make your cone, just like that. Now we have our rhombus. You're going to say, rhombus is rock. Very nice. Now, we've been making a whole lot of circles for eyes. We're going to go on the top of our rhombus shape to make our eyes. They're going to be ovals. Kind of like Mr. Krabs. He has like those tall oval eyes. We can make our circle still for our pupils. Remember that? Say pupils. That's the black dot on the side of our eyes. Now that we're making eyes, we can make eyebrows or even little eyelashes if you'd like. You can make big eyelashes if you want. Remember, this is your monster, your creation. Anything goes within reason. <laughs> you can have a whole lot of eyes, but I don't want the whole picture to be eyeballs. Very nice. We're going to make a smile inside the shape. It starts off like this. And you're going to say, wait a minute, Mr. Lascal, that's not a smile. You're right. It's not a smile. That's what I call meh. Not happy, not sad, meh. All right. To make him happy, you're going to draw your smile like this. What shape is that called? That's right, a semicircle. So we have our semicircle, and it's pointing. So it kind of looks like a like a cereal bowl, or a or a uh, soup bowl, or it could look like a salad bowl. Now we're going to do the tongue. All right. One of the few times you can stick your tongue out at the teacher. Very nice. We're going to make our tongue, and it's going to be the shape that we've made before. Right there. Boop, boop, boop. That's right. It's going to be a heart. Now, we've made a heart before, but it's only going to be a half of a heart. We're going to start at the bottom 
but inside our shape to make our C pointing down, but we don't have a chance to finish our C pointing down. We're going to do the same thing on the other side, backwards C pointing down, and it looks like half of a heart. You can make ovals if you'd like. You can make an oval tongue. You can make a long tongue if you want. But we're using the uh, shape of the heart because we've made a heart a few times already. Now we get to make teeth. You can do this tooth, which is our love monster tooth. What shape is it? Triangle. It has three sides. Now... You can make a square tooth, which is kind of like a human tooth. You can make a long, thin, rectangle tooth. Or you can make the shape. It's the shape of our mouth. What is it? Very good. The semicircle. Half circle, half moon, cereal bowl. So, in the cartooning world, now this is called the Simpsons tooth, okay? So now we have our teeth. We need to fill in the background with our crayon. We don't want to color it in, we want to color it in but not, not heavy. So I'm using the black lightly. Now it looks gray. Now we get to add feet. I'm going to make feet that look like, that's right, they are going to look like trapezoids. And you can even make trapezoid feet. Yep, our legs are trapezoids, our feet are going to be trapezoids. You can make, uh, you can make ovals like a potatoes. Yep, you can make stick legs, stick feet. You can make brick feet, which are rectangles like our scribble monster, like our scribble. Or a love monster had circles for toes, little claw triangles inside. Doesn't matter arms. Okay, I'm going to use macaroni arms because it looks like a macaroni noodle. One pointing down, one pointing up. And since we've done circles and squares, we are now going to do triangles. And since we have triangles, we've done ovals and rectangles, we are going to do triangle fingers. Wow, looks like claws, right? That's one way to do the triangles, or you can make triangles like this. Kind of looks like a robot, maybe. Or you can just make your ovals, or, or just lines. We are practicing lines. Speaking of lines, we could do curly lines. Okay, we can make fun hair just by making curly cues or curly lines like this. <laughs> and we can make lines down here. What kind of line is that? Wavy. What kind of line is that? Zigzag. What kind of line is that? Horizontal. Speaking of horizontal, it matches with this word. Remember what the line is that goes under the feet? Mine's somewhat straight. There's a little dip in it over here, and that's okay. You can put hills on yours. You can have wavy lines for hills, mountains, if you want zigzags. Say horizon line. Remember, the horizon line is where the sky meets the ground. Or if you're at the shore, it's where the ocean meets the sky. You'll have an opportunity to color all of this in different colors, however you'd like. When you're finished, you're going to sign it 
by writing your name at the bottom like that. Okay, hopefully yours is a little neater than mine. Uh, it's, it's hard to write upside down. Um, you can send your pictures in, your projects, to my email address. When taking a picture, just have it flat on the table. Try to make it as square as possible. If it's off to an angle, it's really hard for me to crop. And if a student is like uh, writing their name across the picture, I can't use a lot of that picture, wherever the name is. Since it's going on the website, I want to protect our students by not having any names. Uh, so I've been editing each of them. I will respond when I get them. Well, not when I get them. I edit them, then I respond. So if you don't get an email back immediately, don't get upset. I will be going through it, editing it. And then I'll be sending a thank you, uh, a great, uh, nice job. Here's the email address you can send it to. That's my family connection, K-L-A-S-C-A-L-A -A -A at W-B-O-E dot N-E-T. And that's how you can send me your awesome artwork for the website. I hope you guys had a great day. Uh, care workers, parents, adults, um, aunts, uncles, grandparents, thank you guys so much i want the students to turn to you to the adult in the room and say we appreciate you and uh i truly do we can't be doing this without your help we are going to now leave it's time for me to say au revoir or goodbye and uh, i want you to uh have a great week have a good day enjoy um enjoy creating and always keep creating you can send these pictures in whenever you want uh, over the course of a few weeks now. So long.